The comic book industry can be a highly competitive environment, particularly among the big four – Marvel, DC, Image, and Dark Horse. However, independent creators have been making comics for years in various formats. One of the most popular formats is the black and white comic. Heck, I myself have an independent comic that I want to BUY REVOLUTION OF THE MASK! IT'S ONLY 72 CENTS! <clears throat> er, er, sorry, the uh, camera must have hiccuped. Anyway, independent comics can be really good. But then there's something like today's subject. As such, let's dig into Cinnamon number 11. Okay, let's start with the logo. Why is it the creators feel that if they switch around the letters on a name that makes it sound good? Cinnamon, spelled with an S and two N's. Because poor literacy is cool. Visually, the cover is kind of bland, though having the being rising up like that is kind of cool, but the effect is ruined by the woman in the Vampirela outfit. Is she supposed to be Cinnamon? If that's the case, then at least she's wearing sensible shoes. That's the ticket to a great superhero. Ah, screw it, let's move on. Catfish Comics brings you the exciting 11th issue of Cinnamon, the sexiest superheroine of all. Well, it's good to see the creators have their priorities straight with their superheroines. There's a huge load of backstory dumped in the introductory paragraph, so I'll give you the cliff notes. Cinnamon is a woman named Cindy Canyon. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a porn star at all. And she's starting to run low on cash. A place called Golden Valley, so this takes place in Minnesota, is being terrorized by a maniac known as the Heartbreaker. We went out on a few dates, but he never calls! He never calls! There's also some woman who was terrorized by a gang of thugs, it's never a gang of grannies or something, is it, who that was saved by Cinnamon. Said woman, named Amy, told Cinnamon that she and her friends were fans of her no-nonsense approach to crime fighting. Oh goody, a no-nonsense approach. Hooray for killing and maiming? Reading the credits, it says that this is issue 11 of the third volume of this series. What's worse is that it says it's published quarterly. That means this comic has been around for at least three years before this issue was printed. Who the hell was a fan of this crap? We open to somewhere in the South Pacific, where two French officers are getting ready to do a nuclear test. They mention that they're ready to press the button, and that they've been getting telegrams protesting their nuclear tests. As one of the officers pushes the button, the other gasps as he says that one of the telegrams is from Jerry Lewis. Hey, French stereotypes that aren't funny at all. What a great way to open your comic. The button turns out to be for the nuclear test. It's seriously just a big button that anyone can press. And there's a fish that's apparently flying around the blast. And it says, well, there goes the neighborhood. What the hell? Did Douglas Adams write this? So long and thanks for all the fish. So sad that it should come to this. Meanwhile, a nearby atoll is hit by the nuclear aftershock. This apparently wakes up a demonic woman who bursts out of the ground screaming, Death to America! Damn hippies! We cut to a beach in California. A woman is tanning and the narrator comments, Someone should tell her it's not healthy to tan. But maybe not yet. <laughs> wow, a lecherous narrator. That's really what the comic reading public wants. You know what would have improved Watchmen? If we had a lecherous narrator commenting on Silk Spectre. Anyway, the woman who's tanning says, Hey, who's blocking the sun? I don't want to tan unevenly. How the heck can she tell? The shadow of the demon woman doesn't even cover half of her back and she has her eyes closed. After more complaints about the sun, she looks up and beholds the demon woman. Hello, America. Terradon is back. Terradon is back and starting on a new triumphant world tour. I've just flown in from the mid-Pacific. So like your arms are tired? Hehe. <laughs> After that non-joke, Terradon punches the guy out. I think I'm gonna like Terror Dawn. Only a sick nation lets women parade about half naked. Never mind, I hate her now. Did the creators even think about what they were saying with this? We have this woman who claims America is corrupt and indecent, particularly because women at a beach are wearing bathing suits, stop the presses, yet she herself is wearing clothing that amounts to a bathing suit. After a really unfunny bit where Terror Dawn attacks a woman who apparently uses cosmetic surgery, she flies off to attack the nearest city. We cut to downtown Golden Valley, where Cindy Canyon is at an employment agency hoping to find work. So Cindy goes into the office with the agent, but before they can even sit down, the agent tells her they won't be taking her on because more qualified people are available. Well, what a wonderful way to operate your business, by being rude to the customers! Anyway, there's nothing important about this scene except for the fact that the woman insults Cindy because of her looks, insinuating she's a prostitute, and Cindy fires back with an insult about the woman's weight. Yeah, this is really the kind of thing that makes me want to go to my comic book shop every Wednesday. Oh, and for some reason, Cindy's not wearing a bra. We know this since we can clearly see her nipples poking through her blouse. Is she the sexiest superheroine of all because she doesn't believe in proper support? That's not sexy, that's stupid. 
Cindy walks out to the street only to find Pterodon throwing cars around. She strikes an heroic pose, or rather a pose of her pushing her rear out behind her, and thinks how good it'll be to work out her frustrations. We shift scenes over to a nearby college campus where there are more women not wearing bras. Three girls confront a rapist named Todd, and I've got to admit, thinking of him getting injured is certainly an entertaining thought, but it's ruined by what we get here. Upskirt shots of the girls' thong panties. I don't get it! What the hell is with this comic? Speaking as a feminist myself, I'm not exactly getting a pro-women message here. I mean, we've got a woman who was made a joke of because she got plastic surgery, women who trade insults with each other over looks, a villain who critiques other women for wearing bikinis at beaches, despite wearing one herself, a hero whose outfit is more common in adult films than they are as legitimate superheroes, and now panty flashing! You know, it's clear the creators would have been more than happy just having naked women here doing this, so if they wanted to make a porno comic, why the hell didn't they just make a freaking porno comic?! Anyway, the lead woman in the group is Amy from the introductory text. She says that Cinnamon taught me how to handle guys like you while putting on a pair of brass knuckles with spikes attached to them. By revolution of the mask! It doesn't suck like this does! Moving on, we cut to The Facility. What an original and memorable name. Where the new boss is settling in. Apparently the facility is some kind of superhuman affairs office or something. The boss and another woman discuss The Project. What an ominous name and say that their best chance lies with Cindy Canyon, a.k.a. Cinnamon. The other woman says she spoke with Cindy's parents and that they've given permission for her to be readmitted. Wait a second, Cinnamon is a minor? They've been showing off her nipples through her outfit and she's a freaking minor? What the hell is wrong with this comic? There's a scene where a criminal in prison meets with some talk show host, but it serves no purpose here and we can skip it. Anyway, we cut back to Super Jailbait as she starts to fight Pterodon. Pterodon keeps bringing up the capitalist swine of America. Wait a minute! 